Okay guys, so in today's video we're going to be looking at the effects of exercise on cardiac output, stroke volume and heart rate. But before we can describe this relationship, we need to know what those keywords mean. So if we look at cardiac output first, cardiac output is the total volume of blood pumped by the heart in one minute. So the total amount in one minute. Stroke volume is the volume of blood ejected from the ventricles with each beat. So notice the key difference between cardiac output and stroke volume. Stroke volume is with each beat and cardiac output is in one minute. Okay, and finally heart rate is the number of times the heart contracts in one minute and that's measured in beats per minute. Now, if we look at an equation to describe this relationship, we can see that cardiac output is equal to stroke volume multiplied by heart rate. Now, something that you should be aware of is that the symbol for cardiac output is Q, just in case that appears on an exam question. So if we look at a worked example, somebody with a stroke volume of 70 milliliters and a heart rate of 50 beats per minute would have a cardiac output of 3.5 liters per minute. Now we also need to be able to describe what happens to cardiac output and heart rate and stroke volume during exercise. So as we know, when we exercise, our working muscles require more oxygen. So because oxygen is transported in the red blood cells, we need more blood to be pumping around the body, and therefore we need an increase in cardiac output. Now if we think back to the equation, we can have an increase in cardiac output in two ways. Firstly, we can increase the heart rate, because if we think about it, stroke volume multiplied by heart rate, if we have an increase in heart rate, we're going to have an increase in cardiac output. And in the same way, if we increase stroke volume, we're also going to have an increase in cardiac output. Now, the sympathetic nervous system actually causes both things to happen. We increase the heart rate and stroke volume increases by the heart contracting with a greater force. So that's how we increase cardiac output during exercise. Next thing we need to look at, 2.2.7. We need to analyze the cardiac output, stroke volume and heart rate data for different populations at rest and during exercise. Now you can see that there's a couple of journal articles here and I'll put the links to those in the video for you to look in more detail. Okay, now when we look at um, this first uh, population group, we're gonna look at the difference between untrained and trained adults. Okay, first thing to notice is that the heart rate, the resting heart rate rather, is higher in untrained adults than it is in trained adults. Next thing, stroke volume is lower. So we're pumping less blood with each beat if we are untrained compared to when we're trained. There we go, we've got an increase in stroke volume. Okay, now as we mentioned before, cardiac output is is stroke volume multiplied by heart rate. So if we've got an increase in stroke volume when we're exercising, as we can see here, we're gonna have an increase in cardiac output. Now if we've got an increased cardiac output, we've got a better capacity to deliver oxygen to the working muscles. Next population group we're gonna be looking at is the difference between children and adults. So firstly, you can see here that the cardiac output in adults is significantly higher than children. Now the main reason for this is the fact that adults are much more developed and they have bigger, stronger hearts, and therefore they have a stronger, uh, sorry, an increased stroke volume, as you can see here. Now that is compensated for a little bit because children do have an increase in heart rate compared to adults. However, it doesn't compensate enough to allow for a similar cardiac output. Okay, so you can see there, the main difference is the cardiac output is higher in adults.